With so many people joining the body positivity movement, we're seeing a new era emerge. Society is finally saying no to a widely accepted body image. We support this wholeheartedly. Our bodies are amazing vessels, no matter the shape or the size. Somewhere in your body, gold is circulating through blood vessels that if stretched out would circumnavigate the earth two and a half times. All of this and more is happening and you're worried about your size? So without further ado, here are amazing facts that you did not know about your body. Are you a fan of your body? Or are you more fond of interesting top 10 lists? We don't judge. Either way, hit that subscribe button for more awesome content that will blow your mind. Shameless self-advertising? Check. Onward, fellow body enthusiasts. Size doesn't matter. When you think about the most useful digit on your hand, do your thoughts immediately think of your thumb? Or do you prefer your middle finger, which can communicate very specific instructions through one simple gesture? Or are you a romantic who would consider the ring finger as the most important digit? Ask almost anybody and very few people would actually consider the pinky finger a vital digit. But that is exactly what it is. Without your pinky finger, you would lose 50% of the strength in your hand. Your pinky finger is responsible for keeping a grip on most objects since your index, middle, and thumb direct whatever you're holding. So if you lost your pinky finger, it would be a whole a lot harder to hold on to most things. How would you hold your phone? Have you ever tried doing a pull up without your pinky fingers in place? It's almost impossible. The only reason we have opposable thumbs is because these underrated little members are doing most of the opposing. What if you're kidnapped one day and have to sacrifice a finger? Most people would choose their little old pinky, but you, a learned student of knowledge, should choose the first finger on your non-writing hand. The same goes for your toes. Your pinky and big toe are important, so choose any of the middle three. Although, let's try and avoid any possible kidnapping pinky removing scenarios, shall we? Are men's nipples useful? No, not at all. <clears throat> but why do men have nipples? After all, they can't and shouldn't try to nurse babies. The thing is, all people develop from the same genetic blueprint. For the first six weeks, a baby will develop according to that blueprint, meaning that it doesn't have a gender yet, and that is the reason why you won't know the gender of a baby until the first few months into the pregnancy. After the first six weeks, a little boy will develop testes, the organ that produces sperm and testosterone. At nine weeks, the little male fetus will begin producing testosterone. Of course, by then it's too late to do anything about those nipples. This also raises the question, why are they still there? Obviously, a male won't do anything with them. Well, you might not be doing anything with them, but they are not causing any metabolic harm to the male body so there's no real reason why they shouldn't be there. If you think that this isn't logical, remember that there are trillions of little hairs all over your body that you can't see. And if they were visible, you would look more like a primate than anybody would like to admit. You know, our logic doesn't really work here. So why don't we move on? A species of long distance athletes. Would you like to go on a long distance run after watching this video? Probably not. Most of us just aren't cut out for the type of endurance and stamina that is needed to participate in such a grueling activity. This is not what our bodies tell us, however. The human foot is actually perfectly designed for running. Our bodies are meant to run long distances, and humans are actually the best long distance runners in the animal kingdom. A particularly fit person could actually beat a horse at a long distance race. One fact that proves this is that humans sweat and don't pant. The next time you take your dog for a walk and he comes back panting, remember that dogs aren't meant to be long distance runners. They release heat by panting, which disturbs their breathing. Since we sweat to release heat, this makes us better equipped for long distance running. So the next time you watch the Olympics or attend a long distance race and see those toned athletes run at a steady pace for miles, just remember that you are built to do that as well. With the right amount of practice and mental preparation, you could easily be a long distance athlete. In fact, back in the day, thousands of years ago, our ancestors would chase their prey until they died of exhaustion. Just think about that the next time you grumble about the fact that McDonald's doesn't deliver. The love drug. Besides being an overused trope on rom-coms, being in love is quite literally like being on drugs like amphetamines and speed. It works like this. Hot guy or girl walks past you and you feel weak at the knees. A hot person acknowledges you and bam, your brain is awash with an intoxicating mix of love chemicals that have you feeling all fluttery and swoony. During the first stages of love, the brain is swamped with a substance called phenylethylamine, or PEA for us normies out there. 
which affects the brain in the same way drugs would. Typical symptoms include euphoria, a racing heart, and general lack of pride. <laughs> which is why people go through the honeymoon phase in a new relationship. Basically, they are just love drug zombies who have yet to wake up. It is possible to become addicted to PEA in the same way junkies get addicted to any other drug. The medical term for this phenomenon is attraction junkies, which could explain a series of bad choices back in the teen years. People who are addicted to love will look for partners they are attracted to and fall in love. They will then move on when the high is worn off, leaving a string of broken hearts in their wake. Which is a pretty good breakup line. It's not you, it's my PEA addiction. The 20 Basic Senses Can you name all the senses? Alright, on your marks, get set, go! Taste, touch, hearing, smell, and sight. Don't worry, we'll move on and ignore all that stumbling and sounds of trying to remember. Although we're taught the five basic senses when we were little, we have way more than we were taught. I'm looking at you, Mrs. Thomas. Scientists believe that humans have at least nine and as many as 21 senses. How exactly do they come by those numbers? Well, a sense is commonly defined as any system that is made out of a group of sensory cell types and react to certain physical phenomenons and that correlates to a distinct group of regions inside the brain where the signals are received and carried out. <sighs> This means that there is a wide variety of senses that are available to us. Besides the five big ones, we also have pressure, which is why most of us are so stressed. We also have stranger ones such as itch. Yes, we actually have a group of sensory cells that detect itches, which most of us could actually do without. So when your first grader asks how many senses there are, you can create a little bit of chaos and tell them the truth. <laughs> Baby, you're a firework. There are a few sights in this world that are as magical as a firefly dancing in the night. We are entranced, almost in awe. This is due to the fact that fireflies emit bioluminescence. What is bioluminescence, you ask? I am so glad you asked. This is a biological process that occurs as a result of chemical reactions in the body. Bioluminescence are not a rare occurrence in biology. There are lots of animals such as fish that emit this otherworldly glow. This bioluminescence is used to attract mates, lure prey, and even communicate with smaller species. But for the first time, biologists were able to prove that humans also emit this glow. Japanese scientists Daisuke Kikuchi and Masaki Kobayashi from the Tohoku Institute of Technology were the first to discover the world's first images of bioluminescence with the aid of a highly sensitive charge-coupled device, or CCD, for us tech nerds. Turns out you are a firework after all. Katy Perry knew it first. Before you get excited and go rushing off, this glow is weaker than what the human eye can pick up. So you do shine just in the dark, and no human could possibly see it. Isn't that just the story of my life? In the jungle. It is every nature enthusiast's nightmare to get lost in a rainforest. You could so easily be trapped and spend the next few months tripping over vines and missing bacon. <sighs> This is because rainforests are massive. The Amazon River Basin, for example, is the biggest rainforest in the world. It stretches over 40% of the South American continent and includes parts of eight separate countries. That's about the size of 48 US states. Rainforests are massive, with an incredibly diverse ecosystem, and that's pretty cool and all, but you're carrying around an ecosystem that could rival even the Amazon River Basin inside your belly button. And not only because you haven't cleaned it out in a while. We've all been there, right? Wait, is that just me? Moving on. Researchers have found out that our navels are the cozy little homes of thousands of bacteria. Researchers from North Carolina State University rounded up 60 volunteers and swabbed their bellies. These swabs revealed that the researchers had struck bacterial gold. Living in your navel are up to 2,368 species of bacteria, 1,458 of which are probably new to science. Some subjects housed as few as 29 species, while others harbored close to 107. One subject had a type of bacteria that has previously been discovered only in Japanese soil. The kicker? He's never even been to Japan. Researchers have likened the biodiversity of our navels to that of a rainforest. You don't even want to know what they found in the armpits. Yay. Super people. To most people, super strength is limited to superheroes or billionaire playboy philanthropists. But in actuality, our muscles are much stronger than they appear to be. While you might not be able to become a caped crusader or defender of justice, you are stronger than you look. Take that, ninth grade bullies! Human strength is limited to your current measly capacity. 
to protect your tendons which wouldn't be able to handle the sheer strength of your muscles. These limitations can be removed during emergencies or stressful conditions due to an adrenaline rush, during which people have been known to do extraordinary or even <clears throat> super things. What happens is that during an emergency, like a landslide or the last level of Mario Kart, stressors send signals to the hypothalamus, the part of the brain responsible for maintaining the balance between stress and relaxation in the body. Mine might be broken. The hypothalamus then sends a chemical signal to your adrenal glands. This, in effect, puts the body into emergency mode. Imagine a red flickering light and loud warning siren going off. These glands then secrete the big guns, adrenaline, epinephrine, and noradrenaline. Your heart rate and respiration increases, pupils dilate, but most importantly, your muscles contract, giving you almost superhuman strength. Adrenaline is basically a super hormone, allowing us to become more agile as well as strong, allowing us to punch danger in the face. The Dimples of Beauty Dimples have long been regarded as something that is both desirable and enviable. Because sadly, not all of us have dimples. A person with dimples can literally get away with anything. Like, they could rob a bank and probably get away with it too. The rest of us, well, you know what would happen. But most of us don't lavish the same attention on back dimples, since they are more common and most females have them. Named after the Roman god of beauty, these dimples are known as the Dimple of Venus. These little indentations can actually tell you a whole lot about your body. Officially known as lateral lumbar indentations, they are caused by ligaments pulling under the skin in that area. Wow, that's fascinating. No, wait, there's more. They are genetic, so you probably inherited them from your mother, so you should probably give her a call to thank her. She'll probably be a bit confused, but I'm sure she'll appreciate it. And if you're ever feeling down, just remember that these were a sign of beauty in Roman times. So you probably would have had a whole lot of dates if you were born in that time. If you don't have them, you're still beautiful, just not to ancient Romans. Blood money. People have always been fascinated with gold. Ancient cultures used to believe it had healing qualities and would use it in their medicines. People would start wars over the precious metal and others have literally crossed oceans in the hopes of finding some. Other people who had it in abundance would become obsessed with it, giving it qualities that it didn't have. This was the case of 16th century French courtier Diane de Poitiers, who was best known as King Henry II's mistress. She believed that drinking liquid gold would keep her younger for longer. She is known for her extraordinary beauty. But the gold may also have been what killed her. While many of us wouldn't go to such extremes, we hope, there is no doubt that we could do with a little more gold. Well, as it turns out, you don't have to look much further than your own body. Scientists say that we absorb the gold into our bodies during our day-to-day -day life, and that it has no discernible effect on our health, good or bad. The average person contains about 0.2 milligrams of gold in their blood. And while gold may be valuable, it's not that valuable. The good news? You're a little richer than you originally thought. The bad news? Not by much. Well, there we go. Now you're much more positive about your body. You're welcome. There is so much more to learn and we have it all. So subscribe and leave a big ol' thumbs up. And remember, choose the first finger of your writing hand, not your pinky.